All right, welcome back. Now we're going to go and take a look at sign up forms, how to create them and the different type of sign up forms that you can put on your website. So up on the menu and just make sure as well that you're still on the current list up on the menu, click on sign up forms and click on create your first sign up form. Now the first thing you'll see is that there are three steps in creating a form. Design the form, edit the settings of the form and then publish the form. Right now we're not going to publish the form, we're just going to design and edit the settings of the form so that we have it ready for a little bit later on in the course. Now the first step is to choose a template for your form. Now there are lots to choose from and I normally like to click on generic and choose from here. Now I'm recommending that you stick with a very simple kind of form to begin with because otherwise sometimes you have problems with the formatting, with fitting it into the widget on your blog or whatever but if this is your first time doing this I recommend that you stick with something very simple, for example this one here, Cooper, or this one here even. Now I personally like to go with a blank template and I'll show you what I mean by that. It's this one here, it's called Basic and the reason that I like to go with this is because this allows me to create the form any way I like. So this is the basic template loaded. Now the first thing that I normally do is I remove this powered by Aweber email marketing because I don't want that to show up on my form. And as you can see we have a name field and an email field. Now I prefer just to collect first names and email addresses. So if I click right here on this little pencil for edit I can change here where it says name, I can change that to first name. And I'm going to leave the required field ticked because I do want the subscribers to enter their name. All right, so now we have first name and email address. Now you can add other fields if you want to, but I don't recommend that you do because People really don't like to enter a lot of information when they're just subscribing to your list. So it's not like they're buying something at this point in time. So you want to make it as easy as possible for people to sign up to your list and the more fields that there are to fill in on your form, the less likely they are to do it. So I always just leave it as first name and email address. Now some people say that if you just use email address and you don't use first name, you'll get even more subscribers. But, well, I don't know, but I like to collect the first name because when I show you how to compile emails here in Aweber, I'll show you that you can personalize the emails with the subscriber's first name, and I like to do that. And I, I really think that it's best to collect the first name. Okay, now I want this form to look a bit better. It's looking very plain at the moment. I need it to stand out on my website. Now of course you could choose something more colourful like this but I'm going to show you how to create this basic form using customization, and then you can have it any colour that you want it to so it can suit the theme and the colours on your website. Now in this drop down box here we can choose different parts of the form to edit. At the moment we're editing the body now the background here is transparent, there's no background color at all, but if I wanted to give the background a color, I can click here and I can choose any color I want to. So I wouldn't want it black, but you can click around here to get any color you want. And when you have a color that you like, just click OK. And you can go back and change this anytime. And I think I'm going to give it a, a border. So I'm going to give it a dashed border and I'm going to choose two pixels for that and the color of the dash border I can change that as well if I want to 
And I feel that this text here is very small, so I'm going to change that. The font is 12, so I'm going to change the font as well. I think I will have Tahoma, and I think I'm going to make it 16. I'm going to resize the form a little bit by dragging it out like that. And now let's take a look at the submit button here. This is very small again. So I'm going to choose the same font to Homer and I'm going to make the font size much bigger at 24. Now the background color of the submit button, and I think I'm going to change that. I could also change the color of the text. Right now it's white, that's fine. Now I can enter a header here for this form so I can type some text in here. Now right now I'm showing you the actual process of creating a form. We're going to be talking later on in this course about lead magnets. These are ways of enticing or encouraging, I should say, people to subscribe to your list and you want to have really good lead magnets. So we're going to be covering that in detail as well here in this course. But right now I'm only showing you the actual process, the technicalities of how to do this. So I've got some text in here for the header. I'm going to center it. I'm also going to make it a lot bigger. I'm just going to change the color of that submit button because it's totally wrong. Now down here we have a footer. I tend to like to remove the footer because if you haven't got anything to put in there, it leaves a great big space at the bottom of your form when it displays on your website. So I tend to remove that. Now what we can do is we can click on preview now to take a look at this form and see what it actually would display like. All right, so here it is and it's okay. I might try and get a little bit more space at the sides because it's kind of squashed up here. So I'm going to try that. So for the body here, we can click on advanced options. And right here we see the padding, the left and right padding. We can make this a little bit bigger. And if you notice here when I'm changing the padding at this side, it's also changing it at this side, but I don't want it to. So right here where we have this little chain link, this is a linking the padding on the left to the padding on the right. Now, if I click that to unlink it, now I can change the padding over here without the padding also changing over here. But anyhow, you get the idea. So you can play around with this, change the colors, change the fonts, change the spacing, change the style. You can even change the style of these input fields as well. So you can change the border, you can have an inset if you want, or you can have it as a dotted border. You can change the background if you want to as well. And you can also change the font. Now I'm going to change the font. I'm going to make the font Arial and I'm going to make it a bit bigger than 12. I'm going to make it 16. That's going to automatically make these input boxes a bit bigger as well. Now make sure that if you've got a light background on your input fields, like here it's white, make sure that the text color is dark. Otherwise, when your subscribers typing in, they won't be able to see what they're typing in. So right here I have it as black, which is fine. So I'm going to leave this form the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and click save your form. Now, of course, you can save your form anytime you like as you're working. You may want to do that while you're learning how to do this and practicing. It's a good idea to click save every now and again because it's going to take you a little bit longer than it takes me. So once you're happy with your form, click on go to step two. And now you're going to enter the settings for this form. Give your form a name and this is for your reference only. Now the thank you page if you leave it as basic version, which I recommend you do, at least until you're more practiced at doing this and you get more experienced and you're developing your skills. But for now, leave it at the basic version. So what will happen then is that when a subscriber fills in your form, they will be presented with Aweber's basic thank you page. 
And on that thank you page as well as saying thank you for subscribing, it also says click here to go back so they can go back to your website. You can also, if you wish to, click to open the thank you page in a new window and that's quite a good idea because that means that they don't actually leave your page at all. Now the other options you have here is stay on the current page. I don't recommend that you do that because they will not know whether or not they've signed up successfully to your list. The other option is custom page your own URL. This is if you create your own thank you page. So we're going to look at that too, but for now we're going to leave the basic version. Already subscribe page. The basic version for the already subscribe page will say you are already subscribed to this list. Okay, so we just leave that. Then save your form and go to step three. You always need to save before you can go to the next step. Now, this is where we get the code to publish the form. But right now, at this point in time, we are not going to publish this form on our website because we are going to now go and look at the other types of forms that you can make. 